Thank you so much, Ms. Crystal Lu, for a wonderful speech. Because of a racist policy such as Chinese Exclusion Act, the Asian American, even though a quarter of the globe's population, is the smallest racial group in America. For that reason, they are often omitted and they're often excluded from national discourse. Their issues are largely written down and swept under the carpet. In 2013, when TV host Jimmy Kimmel asked on TV, should we allow the Chinese to live? Asian Americans held protests all over the country, hundreds of thousands of people, and they tried to get support from congressmen. And at last, they did get a small group of congressmen to condemn Jimmy Kimmel's genocide speech. And guess who are these congressmen? They are all Asian Americans. Isn't that disillusion? Condemning genocide should be a universal humanitarian concern, but only Asian Americans stood up for its own people. That's the condition of America. Race-based policies have re reduced this country to a racial jungle where politicians largely only care about their own voting bloc, people of their own skin color and race. We need to change that. We cannot let this go on anymore. All the Americans should care about all the Americans, not just people of their own skin color. That's totally wrong and that's blatant, hardcore racism. We need to change that. Asian Americans have held numerous protests for their equality. And yet, they never got mentioned in mainstream media. We held numerous protests, but we cannot get any coverage until in 2014. To our surprise, we saw in mainstream media, a person named Edward Bloom has filed a, con a litigation on behalf of Asian Americans against racial discrimination by Harvard University. And we couldn't believe our eyes because now mainstream media are indeed talking about Asian Americans. That is a fresh, shocking sight. Asian American communities are very grateful for Mr. Edward Bloom's universal concerns for equality for all Americans. He's a beloved figure, a source of inspiration and strength. He has been invited to give speeches all over the country. He's our hero. Let's invite President of AACE Yu Kong Zhao to give Mr. Bloom a award in recognition of his wonderful support and human equality work for all Americans. Uh, it is the highest award issued by Asian American Coalition for Education called the Champion of Equal Education Rights. Mr. Edward Blum brings top-notch legal team four former clerk of Justice Thomas. This amazing legal team, plus a lot of resources, help our cause. So welcome Mr. Edward Blum. Thank you for coming. My name is Edward Bloom, and I am the president and founder of Students for Fair Admissions. Thank you. In 2014, Students for Fair Admissions sued Harvard and the University of North Carolina in federal court, alleging both schools' admissions policies were unfair and unconstitutional. When we filed those lawsuits, this organization only had about 100 members. Today, we have close to 23,000 members. We could not have achieved this growth without the help of so many people who sponsored this rally. So, on behalf of Students for Fair Admissions and our 23,000 members, I would like to thank the following. Yu Kong Zhao, S. B. Wu, Ying Chao Liu, Alex Chen, Lin Yang, Jessica Yang, Mei Meng. I'd like to thank you all for your dedication 
and your sacrifice to make this event possible today. Thank you. As you all know, tomorrow begins a three-week trial that will expose Harvard's discriminatory policies targeting Asian Americans to the federal court and the American people. I'm going to tell you about these practices in a minute, but before I do that, I want to talk briefly about Harvard University. Let me begin by saying that there is far, far more to admire about Harvard than there is to dislike about Harvard. From the Crocodillos, Harvard's men's a cappella group, to the Dana-Farber Institute at Harvard Medical School, this university is an American gem, one of the most important academic institutions in the world. We are not here to bash Harvard or any other university. We are here because Harvard's admissions policies are discriminatory, and we have petitioned the courts to compel Harvard to stop these unlawful practices. As we all know, our country is unique. Unlike most nations, we Americans have diverse backgrounds and diverse histories. Some of us here today trace our roots back to Ireland and Italy and Mexico, where famine and poverty drove our ancestors to this country. Some of us here today have forebears who came to this land shackled in slave ships from West Africa. Some of us here today trace our roots back to the ghettos of Poland and Ukraine, where the devastation of World War and the Holocaust brought our parents and our grandparents to this country. And some of us here today are here today because you fled the tyranny and repression of Tiananmen Square. So regardless of where you or your parents or your great, great, great grandparents came from, we are here today to reclaim the cornerstone of America's civil rights movement. And that cornerstone is the proposition that your race and your ethnicity should not be used to help you in your life's endeavors or harm you in your life's endeavors. Your race and your ethnicity should not be a factor when you apply for a job or are considered for a promotion. Neither should your race be a factor in determining which congressional district you're assigned to nor to strike you from serving on a jury. And race and ethnicity should not be a factor when a student applies to a university like Harvard or the University of North Carolina or the University of Texas or any university. In a multiracial, multi-ethnic nation like ours, the admissions bar cannot be raised for some races and lowered for others. We do not believe that students are defined by their skin color or ethnicity. Your race may define how you look, but it does not define who you are. Your skin color, thank you, your skin color does not reveal your likes and dislikes whether you are an outgoing person or more of an introspective one, a leader or more of a follower, whether you are passionate about sports or passionate about modern jazz. A student can change her grades, her standardized test scores, AP classes, and out of school activities, but she cannot change her race and ethnicity. Those are immutable cosmetic characteristics. Immutable cosmetic characteristics. 
Every one of us is a unique individual and must be judged as such. So let me be clear. The mission of Students for Fair Admissions is to end racial classifications and preferences in college admissions. This is not a controversial goal. The American people support us. In poll after poll, over 70% of Americans do not believe that a student's race should be a factor in the admissions process. Over 70%. Well, during the next three weeks, the court and the world will learn how Harvard has systematically discriminated against Asian American applicants for years. But sadly, this is not a new phenomenon. The history of Harvard's holistic discriminatory practices go back nearly 100 years, as dozens of historians have detailed. Back in the 1920s, Harvard's leadership believed it had too many Jews because almost a quarter of all Harvard freshmen were Jewish. In 1920, in a letter to a colleague, Harvard President Abbott Lawrence Lowell warned that the increasing number of Jewish students enrolling at Harvard would ultimately, I'm going to quote now, ultimately ruin the college, close quote. To solve the Jewish overpopulation problem, Harvard invented the holistic admissions system, which diminished an applicant's academic achievements in favor of subjective factors like leadership and sociability. Within a year, holistic admissions criteria decimated Jewish enrollment. Today, Harvard's discriminatory policies now target Asian Americans. So how do we know this? During the last four years of litigation, Students for Fair Admissions has analyzed six years of Harvard's admissions data. We have deposed about 30 Harvard officials, and we have reviewed thousands of emails and documents. So here is what the evidence concludes. First, Harvard intentionally discriminates against Asian American applicants. Second, Harvard racially balances its incoming freshman class to ensure a certain percentage of whites, Hispanics, Asian Americans, and African Americans. Third, race is not a minor factor, but a predominant admissions factor. And finally, this is important, finally, Harvard never made any good faith effort to use race neutral means to shape their freshman class. Well, not only did our experts conclude that Harvard's admissions practices harm Asian Americans, but so did Harvard's own internal experts. Yes, you heard that right. Harvard concluded it was discriminating as well. In 2013, a year before Students for Fair Admissions filed this lawsuit, Harvard's internal think tank conducted a study that was disclosed to Harvard's senior administrators showing that Harvard's policies harmed Asian American applicants. Rather than address the study's results, Harvard's leaders killed it and then buried it. It is one thing to be unaware of an injustice, but, it, to, but to have an internal report detailing discrimination and do nothing about it is simply unpardonable. As disturbing as this is, there is one fact about Harvard's admissions policies that is even more unsettling. And that is how Harvard's in-house admissions officials rate Asian Americans 
in what is called the personal rating. Here's what we know. Asian American applicants are significantly stronger than all other racial groups in academic performance, such as grades, test scores, AP classes, and the like. They also perform very well in non-academic categories and have higher extracurricular scores than any racial group. In addition, Asian American applicants receive higher overall scores from alumni interviewers than all other racial groups. And they receive strong scores from teachers and guidance counselors, scores that are nearly identical to white applicants. Yet Harvard's in-house admissions officials assign Asian Americans the lowest personal score of any racial group. The lowest personal score of any racial group. Harvard consistently rated Asian American applicants lower than whites, Hispanics, and African Americans on traits like positive personality, likability, courage, kindness, and being widely respected. This is gravely unsettling, regardless of your position on race-based affirmative action. Most Americans have come to reject racial stereotypes like these. When you treat individuals differently because of their race, it frays the social fabric of a college campus, which will ultimately fray the social fabric of a nation. Let us always remember that a university is more than the sum of its ethnic parts. Students should celebrate their commonalities as much as their differences. So let me close by saying that regardless of the outcome of this trial, the movement to end racial classifications in college admissions will not end. I am confident that the next generation of leaders are in this very gathering today. And I ask that you commit to this worthy goal for the benefit of all Americans. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you all.